Hello, and welcome to the University of Iowa School of Social Work graduation ceremony for 2020. My name is Stephen Cummings, one of the faculty at the School of Social Work, and I'm happy that you've joined us today. First, we'll hear some opening remarks from Dr. Sarah Sanders. Dr. Sanders is a professor and former director of the University of Iowa School of Social Work. She is currently the Associate Dean for Strategic Initiatives and Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Today is a wonderful day, not the day that we expected, but a wonderful day. It's a day that many of you have been dreaming upon for several years. May you be graduating from your undergraduate program, your master's program, or your doctoral program. This is a day that you have been waiting for. One of the things I always like to think about is today's a day in which a destiny has been fulfilled. Each one of you have been on a destiny for, for achieving a social work degree and making significant changes in the world. Many of you are probably sitting watching this with your family and friends, and I would like to take a moment to thank them for giving us you for the time that you've been in our program. But I also think it's important that you turn to them and thank them also for their support I think we have to recognize for us to achieve our academic goals and dreams, other people in our life have to make sacrifices. So please just take a moment and thank them for the support that they have given you and the sacrifices that they have made to ensure your success. This is being watched by some wonderful faculty and staff of the School of Social Work. May you be in one of our distance education sites, may you be faculty from our online program, may you be individuals who are in Iowa City, I'm always proud to think that the social work faculty are by far the best faculty at the University of Iowa. And so I do want to take a moment and recognize them as well for the contributions that they have made to your success and your ability to go out there and make difference in the world. As we think about our day today, one of the things that I want to start with is thanking you for allowing me the opportunity to be a part of your life for, for the last few years. Um, I am deeply, deeply proud to call you a colleague, and I am very excited to watch your career unfold. I think we have to accept the fact and start with that today's not the day that we expected. None of us expected to be watching our graduation on Zoom. None of us expected having me be re pre recorded. Some of you undergrads know that I get very nervous speaking at graduation. I'm not nervous today. I have a dog on my lap, I'm in my family room. My son's coming down the steps. I'm not nervous at all, but this isn't the environment in which we expected. We didn't believe that our educational journey would end in the middle of a pandemic. Engaging in social distancing, suddenly having our semester uprooted and us being, being taught online and us being taken out of field experiences and having to be, be taught how to be a social worker in a non-applied way. That's not what we expected. We have to recognize that for us as social workers, the unexpected is what our career is based on, is having to intervene, having to come on board in unexpected ways. But the other thing that we have to recognize as social workers is every one of you are joining the field now in a state of what we consider to be a new normal. And as a person who does grief work and grief therapy work, we talk about new normal all the time, based upon loss and based upon how our world, world changes in the face of loss. Well, I think that we have to recognize the safety, security, the, the normal of how our world was pre-COVID-19 isn't there anymore. We're looking at all aspects of the career that we love having to be transformed to now meet this new normal. So as social workers, I think it's important to recognize even if we're not necessarily acknowledged as being on the front lines, social workers all over the United States have been front line responders. They are the individuals who have had to quickly adapt to support all the other individuals who are providing the medical care. We as social workers, we've had to be on the front line by suddenly learning how to do telehealth, intervening and doing family therapy on Zoom, knowing that we're going to be having to do assessments and interventions over the phone, looking at how we, we can only be face-to-face -face with people in emergencies, hoping 
that we're assessing that and understanding what's happening most correctly. One of the things that I, want, I firmly believe is that as first responders, even if your work has been unrecognized, you have been the backbone of systems, keeping, keeping families together, people united, individuals housed, people fed, kids moving forward in school, and the list that can go on. And so for all of you who have had to step away from your practice, know that the social workers who, who supervised you, they're still continuing in very, very important ways. And they're looking at how do we adapt to the new normal of how we're gonna be providing services in the future. We have had to learn, and we're gonna to have to continue to learn, about how do we read facial cues through masks. We're gonna to have to learn and figure out how do we do well checks? How do we do safety checks? How do we assess for abuse? Maybe via Zoom or in a way where, where we're not able to get into the home. We have to realize that coming out of this period of social distancing, our new normal is put more and more people in crisis. We have more people who are, who are having needs not met than probably we even know. Last week during one of our support groups, a social worker who was from New Jersey shared, no, excuse me, she's not from New Jersey, from Pennsylvania. She shared about the level of substance use relapse that she was seeing in her, in her clients and how she is so worried about coming out of the social distancing period and just recognizing what she's gonna be facing on the front lines of providing those services. One of the things though that I always like to do, and it's our, it's our strengths-based perspective, is look at how do we use what has occurred with COVID-19 as an opportunity for us social workers. What we know is that we thrive in crisis. That's what we're made for, that's who we are, is we are crisis interventionists. We only enter into situations that aren't going well. We enter in in a state of crisis. Why do we thrive so much in those settings? Well, we thrive in those settings because we're systems thinkers. We believe that systems have to keep changing and we enjoy rebuilding structures. We recognize that the status quo isn't always good, that when our systems in, enter into a state of status quo, we have apathy and stagnant stagnation, which doesn't allow for growth to continue. We recognize that issues and crises come with opportunities for how we can do things better, how we can address needs different, and most importantly, how can we expand our reach? How can I look at new client populations that are coming out of the COVID-19 situation that will need services that we haven't considered? COVID-19 has allowed us to confront policy issues that we haven't necessarily wanted to confront. Have the conversations, the difficult conversations with people across the aisle that we haven't necessarily been able to have. And through all this, we know that new, new social service organizations and no, new social service benefits will be coming out. So when we look at this crisis, what I want you all to think about is a phrase that many of you have heard me say. Many of you have heard me say this. I am asking you, as our new frontline social workers, to step into leadership. How do we step into leadership in a face of change? How do we engage in that process so that we can become those change agents to bring our systems back together? What I think is important for us to realize is that, that the leadership journey that every one of you have been on started years ago. Now it's your turn to be that next social work leader bringing our system forward. So I wanna leave you with just a few points about, about how do we as social workers step into leadership? The first thing we do when we want to step into, into leadership is we really say to ourselves, who are we? What's my personal mission? What's my personal vision? And we learn how to be able to communicate that to others. So I want you to take a moment and just pause right there in your living room. And I want you to think about the question, why did you become a social worker? What was your vision for what your career is going to be? What is your vision for who you're gonna be as a leader? When we're able to articulate our vision for ourselves and really our mission for where we want to go, 
we're able to articulate what we stand up for and what we're going to stand up against. When we're doing this, we are able to start to develop strategies for how we plan to get there. And most importantly, how do we bring, bring other people along in that journey with us? Leaders don't, have, don't walk alone. I can't be a good leader if I'm standing alone on the street. I need to have people with me. How do I bring them along in that process? One of the things that's important to realize about, about stepping into leadership is if you don't have a vision, you don't have a mission, you're never going to get anywhere because you don't know what you're go where you're going. It's like you're driving down a dark road by yourself. So being able to figure that out first is the most critical way that we step into leadership. From there, as you step into leadership, you have to recognize that you can't do it by yourself. Your goal as a leader is to bring other people along, but most importantly is recognize their accomplishments well before you ever recognize your own. We are only as successful as who we surround ourselves with. My mom used to always say to me, you know, sir, you're known by, you're known by who you associate with. You're known by who you associate with. And I look back upon that and I never really fully understood it until I had to be in a leadership position. And I had to recognize that it was essential for me to do good work. I had to surround myself with good people who would help me in getting there. So part of being a good leader in a time of crisis is knowing who you need to have on your team and who you need to develop and who you need to be bringing along in that process. So part of being recognizing others' accomplishments is realizing that you're not standing alone, but more importantly, your success is secondary to theirs. That their success, their recognition is what should come first. One of the things that we also have to think about when we think about stepping into leadership and acknowledging people's accomplishments is it's really easy to start with the cynicism. It's really easy to look at people and look at their deficits. It's really easy to look at an individual and say they can't be successful. What I would ask of you is to think about, do you assume that people are fundamentally doing their best? Do you believe people from the very beginning are entering into a space wanting to do better? Are you the type of person who mends fences or do you burn them down? If you're an individual who believes that, that people can never achieve more than what they are or more than what they can be, it's gonna be hard to recognize them for their accomplishments because you're starting from a deficit place. The third leadership skill that I want you to think about as you step into leadership post COVID-19 is that you need to learn to delegate and empower. So part of being a good leader is recognizing that there's not enough hours in a day to do all your work. So you need to have the ability to, to trust your team so that you don't have to have your fingers in all pieces of the pie. To recognize that if you delegate of responsibilities and empower others, you're actually doing two things. You're helping develop your workforce and helping to develop the people around you, but you're also starting to recognize people's talents and how those can be expanded. From there, you need to realize as a good leader coming out of crisis is that you're forever a student. I know many of you are probably thinking, I'm never gonna have to pick up a book again. You won't, but you're going to be doing about 30 hours of CEUs every two years. And probably for some of you, you're going to want to do 60. You're forever a student. You're constantly looking at how you can do better and how you can do more. So good leaders are the individuals who start the day recognizing that they're never going to be the smartest in the room. There's always people who are smarter than you. And there's always people who you can help, you can help um, conceptualize your ideas and make what you're doing better. And then the final thing I just want to mention is that you need to learn to speak from the heart. Good leaders are able to share what they're passionate about. What do they care about? What are those things that keep them up at night and motivate them to do even better? Leadership is not something that you're born into. You're not just born a good leader. Leadership is a choice that everybody makes that you can choose to be the leader or you can choose to be the follower. And when we think about speaking from the heart, people who are leaders speak from the heart. They speak with conviction. They speak with those things that they care the deepest about. We lead when we stand up. We lead when we're able to bear our soul for the things that we believe in. We're not willing to stand, stand behind a wall and not articulate those. And so as you develop your leadership skills and as you develop this, this journey post-COVID-19 as a social worker, 
speak with your passion, speak with your conviction from the heart. So in closing, one of the things that I want to say to all of you, as you step into leadership, you step into your career, is that you are enough. You are enough. This year in my human behavior class with students, the theme of maybe I'm not enough was really coming out loud and clear. People had self-doubts. People questioned their abilities. People questioned their ability to succeed in the ways that they dreamed of succeeding. People, live, people were listening to all the negativity around them and were embedding it into their own heart and soul. As leaders, we have to recognize that we are enough and that the criticisms of the world are those people's criticisms. It's really easy to let those become who you, who you, who you see in yourself. But when people throw stones and they criticize you, it's usually a reflection of them, not your skill, not your leadership ability, and not your potential for where you're going in life. I believe today on your graduation day that every one of you is gonna go out and do miraculous things. Every one of you is gonna go out and be a leader and change the world that we live in that is so broken that needs healing. I believe that every one of you is gonna be greater than I ever could dream of being because you're so rich with passion and enthusiasm and talent. So on your graduation day, I want you to know it has been such an honor to be part of the School of Social Work, to have the ability to be an instructor, to have the ability for some of you to be your mentor and to be able to see you grow. So congratulations from the bottom of my heart. I'm so happy that you're not my colleague. Hello, my name is Miriam Landsman and I'm the current director of the School of Social Work. Our school is fortunate to be honored by alumni and friends who have made financial contributions to assist students, creating awards that also give the school and our faculty an opportunity to acknowledge the accomplishments of outstanding students. The descriptions of these awards and the names of the recipients are detailed in the graduation program, which you can download on the commencement page for this event or on our website. It is my pleasure to now present this year's Director's Awards. This honorary award and scholarship recognizes graduating students who have demonstrated outstanding scholastic achievement, creativity, leadership, and service. The financial award is made possible by the generosity of a former director of the school, Frank Glick, and his wife, Mary Bell Glick. Our program directors select the recipients from among students who are nominated by the faculty in each center. In Des Moines, from the BA program, Bobby Backer and Hannah Plants. And from our MSW program, Cheryl Hayes, Emily Loynihan, and Samantha Rodriguez. In our Sioux City program, MSW graduate Joanne Alvarez. And in Iowa City, from the BA program, Abby Logan. And from the MSW program, Mofesola Adeola and Kristen Conrad. All of these graduates have impressed us with their academic achievement, embodied the core values of the social work profession, engaged meaningfully with the school and community, and continuously promoted social justice. Congratulations. Next, Jen Knights will present the 2020 Distinguished Faculty Award. Jen Knights is the Marketing and Community Engagement Specialist for the School of Social Work. On behalf of the Social Work Student Association, we are pleased to announce the 2020 Distinguished Faculty Award recipient. The student organization said this about the award. As we prepare for our final days as undergraduate students, we consider who has had an impact on our journey in social work. Our program has amazing professors who support us in ways that are indescribable. And while an award cannot put into words our appreciation, it will affirm that our professor's abilities and support do not go unnoticed. This year, social work students have chosen Motier Haskins to receive the 2020 Distinguished Faculty Award for Undergraduate Social Work Education. Congratulations, Professor Haskins, and thank you to our Social Work Student Association. I'm Carolyn Hartley, Associate Professor and BASW Program Director, and I'm pleased to present 
are 2020 graduates earning their Bachelor of Arts in Social Work. Amnia Ali. Page Borders. McKenna Casey. Jamie Daggett. Andrea Daly. Trent Beckers. Katarina Goodrich. Emily Johnson. Marley Jones. Miranda Juarez. Abigail Logan. Alicia Martel. Leslie Natasha Martinez Gonzalez. Anne McLaughlin Smith. Marcia Morales. Courtney Nelson. Kathy Pham. Aaron Pischeck. Peyton Poole. Callie Rodemaker. Riley Rhines Perry. Jenna Ryder. Jenna Roberts. Kate Rogalski. Andrea Roddinghouse.
Ashley Rush Lauren Shane Morgan Stangle Michelle Strawman Mason Stumberg Pearl Tate Monica Winter Congratulations to the University of Iowa BASW Class of 2020. Hello, everybody. My name is Stephen Cummings, and I am a clinical assistant professor and the distance education administrator for the University of Iowa School of Social Work. And I'm here to acknowledge the accomplishments of the 2020 graduates of our Masters of Social Work program. Mofesala Adeola. Denise Azpatia. Alyssa Barnes. Sherry Beard. Todd Bender. Emily Brooks. Molly Bruning. Renessa Chase Elizabeth Cordes Brandon De Groot Yabi Dornick Julia Ganda Lena Godlevsky Lauren Goodlove Makisha Green Kelsey Gayette Cheryl Hayes Abigail Heaton Allison Hine
Cindy Hewitt. Karen Holman. Casey Jensen. Jessica Kokish. Katie Cruzen. Liebana Kennan. Christy Lichty. Carly McClure. Katie Mogram. Presley Montgomery. Mallory Nath. Taylor Neighbor Helen Newman Kimber Patterson Maggie Pearson Gabrielle May Peruzzi Jennifer Plotty Hannah Robin Kelsey Rogers Urban Rodriguez Diana Rudolph Tracy Snetzelar Don Spies Sydney Stanky
Rachel Yukena. Leia Vance. Lauren Vegulis. Nicole Watt. Alexis West. Merritt Westrich. Matthew Yoder. Congratulations to the University of Iowa MSW Class of 2020. Happy graduation to all the 2020 social work students at the University of Iowa. While the end, year didn't end the way that we hoped it would, I want to leave you with a couple of party messages. Number one, welcome to a wonderful profession. Every day I'm excited to call myself a social worker. Number two, I know all of you are gonna go out and make great change in whatever area that you go into. And number three, and most importantly, I'm so proud to call you my colleague. I look forward to watching how each one of you change the world. Congratulations, everyone. I celebrate your brilliance, your creativity, your commitment to our profession, all the wonderful things that you're going to do to change the world. Let us know about them. We're counting on you. Congratulations, graduates. I am so proud of you. You've worked so hard to get to this point, and I am so excited to see what you're going to accomplish as a professional social worker. Congratulations, social work graduates. You're going to do amazing things for your community. Go Hawks. Class of 2020, all of us at the School of Social Work are wishing you a bright and beautiful future. Congratulations to all of you, you made it. Congratulations, University of Iowa School of Social Work graduates. I am so excited for you. You are leading us in some new and bold times. And I am excited to call you a colleague. Congratulations. I graduated class of 2020. Although I would much prefer to be seeing all of you in person at a graduation, I can't think of a more compelling reason to put on real clothes and grapple with technology than to wish all of you a very happy graduation. Whether I had you in, in class as a student or through coordination and practicum or even in advising, I can sincerely say that I'm so grateful to have been a part of your journey personally, developmentally, or professionally. Your graduating class is going to have such a unique opportunity to enter into the profession of social work. I am certain that you are prepared for the challenge and that the profession of social work is so lucky to have all of you among us. So congratulations to all of you and please stay in touch. Hi class of 2020, my name is Abby Schuler, and I graduated with my BSW in 2015. I just wanted to say a quick congratulations to you all. Um, I'm super proud to be a social worker and I'm proud to congratulate you in coming into the fold. So congrats and welcome to the team. Hi everyone, my name is Sasha Trinkis. I'm a 2016 grad of the School of Social Work with my BSW. Uh, just uh, saying congratulations, um, what a big day. Uh, welcome to the social work field. We're glad you're here. Hey y'all, my name is Quinn. I graduated with my BSW in 2015. I just wanted to say congrats, you made it, and I cannot wait to see how you change the world. Hey guys, my name's Lindsay. I graduated with my BSW in 2012. Way to go. Congratulations, you guys. Hi, I'm Abby Nave. I graduated with my BSW in 2018. I know you all are going to do great things and best of luck. 
Congratulations. Congratulations. We are so proud of you and so excited for how you're going to change the world. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I wish you all the best moving forward as future social workers. Thank you so much for your contribution to the University Counseling Service this year. The clients you worked with were lucky to have you, and we were lucky to have you as a colleague. I have no doubt that you have a bright career ahead of you, and please don't forget that we will be here to support you long after you graduate. Thank you, and good luck. So glad I got to know you all. Take care. I'm going to miss you, and feel free to stop by and have chocolate again anytime you want. Good luck. Bye. Congratulations. We are very proud of you. Do come back and visit us. Hi, everybody. Hey, I just wanted to say hi, and I'm thinking about you, and I wish you all the very best. And it's been really nice to get to know some of you uh, through my classes. So um, take care and celebrate however you can. Congratulations on this really important day. This isn't how we wanted to do this, unfortunately. We all wanted to be in the same room, and I can tell you that for faculty like myself, in many ways, this is just as important a moment because we get to witness this really happy moment with all of you. However, what hasn't changed is that you are now done with your work and you have earned your degree, and the profession of social work needs really talented people more than ever during this time when our ability to be leaders, to be able to look into the future and see what changes are necessary, what adaptations are necessary. Now, more than ever, we need all of you. So one more time, congratulations and welcome. Hi, class of 2020. Greetings from a member of the class 2003. In the spring of 2003, SARS hit Asia so badly that like you, I didn't have a graduation ceremony. But unlike you, I didn't even finish half of the classes in that semester because by then Zoom was not an option. But look at it here. After more than 15 years, life has brought me to this beautiful place, meeting lovely people, including you. I hope life is as gentle, as graceful to you all. And after a decade or more, when you look back, all you can remember about this difficult time is strength, resilience, kindness, and empathy you have shown. My best wishes to you all. Hi, I'm Billy Marchick from the Des Moines Center of the School of Social Work. I wanted to express to all of you my personal blessings as you go forward into this new chapter of your professional lives. These are extraordinarily challenging times, but they're also times to Recenter and remember why it was that you chose this path, this path called social work. And so, in these extraordinary times, there's a lot that we cannot control the uncertainties ahead. But we can control certain things. We can control our personal integrity and our practice ethics, we can control our compassion for others. We can control our vision for a more just society, and we can control the commitment to live lives that meaningfully make an improved world. And so I ask you all to go forth and do your best. We need you. The profession needs you. Your community needs you. The world needs you. Hey, social work grads. Congratulations on graduating. Do good work in the world. I'm proud of you. Hey graduates, I am so honored and proud to welcome you as my colleagues. I'm Carolyn Hartley, director of the H. Wayne Johnson BASW program. And it is my great pleasure to congratulate all of our undergraduate students on completing your social work degree. We are so proud of all that you've accomplished and especially proud that you will represent the University of Iowa School of Social Work as you join the social work profession. We greatly admire your tenacity, flexibility, and creativity as you had to adapt your learning in the home stretch of completing your degree. 
These are qualities that make for good social workers and will serve you, your organization, and your future clients well. We're sorry we aren't able to celebrate with you in person, but know that we are with you today in spirit. I want to thank your family and friends for sharing you with the school and for all the support you provided your student in accomplishing this important milestone. Congratulations and best wishes to the 2020 graduates of the University of Iowa School of Social Work. Go Hawks! Hello graduates, I'm Julia Kleinschmidt. I teach mainly in our Sioux City and online programs and then I also teach in our integrated sequence. I am so excited and proud to have you as my colleagues. Thank you for all your hard work and be sure to take a moment to appreciate yourself as you enter this new phase of your life. Welcome. Hi, congratulations graduates. You have earned a degree in social work from the University of Iowa. We're so happy for you and we are so very proud of you. My name is Mercedes Fern Klug. I will be the new director of the School of Social Work in June. And the first thing I wanna do as new director is welcome you back. I want you to feel free to come back anytime, next year, the following year, four years from now, five years from now, and actually walk across that stage with the hat and the gown if you want that experience. So you're hereby invited to come back and invite your family and friends and put on that graduation gown and we're gonna celebrate you next year, the following year, whenever you want to. Now, how will you know when graduation is? Well, you have to join our Facebook page. You have to follow us on Twitter. So do that today. Sign up for the School of Social Works Facebook and Twitter and know that you are welcome to come back at any graduation and let us celebrate you. And I have one last message for you. Don't let anybody call you the class of COVID. You're not. Take it from me and our good friend, Coach Hayden Fry. You're the class that kicked COVID's butt. Go Hawks!